<laughs> okay. So, uh, when we fly hot air balloons, it's traditional that we carry champagne. And the story of why we do that is, of course, that ballooning started in France, right? In the year 1783. We had the Montgolfier brothers, who were paper makers, right? And what they would do is, at the end of the day, they would have little scripts and scraps of paper, and they would put those into their fireplace and burn them. And so those little scripts and scraps of paper would take off in that smoke and they would fly. And these guys saw that and said, well, hey, you know, if that smoke is making those little scraps of paper fly, what if we made like an envelope or something like that and captured that smoke, would it fly? And they did, and sure enough, that envelope flew. And they were like, well, how big can we make this, right? And so they made some bigger and bigger balloons, right? And then finally, in September of 1783, they had a balloon that was made out of like muslin that they could go ahead and put men into, right? So they really didn't want to do this at first though because they didn't know what would happen to men when they flew high up into the air. So they did what people do through the ages and they resorted to some animal testing, right? They got themselves a sheep, a duck, and a rooster. And they sent these guys, they put these guys in the balloon, made a big smoky fire under it, chopped the rope that was holding it down, and off they flew, right? So now these guys flew off, that they had this big balloon, and it had smoke coming out of the bottom, and it had to come down. And it comes down in this farmer's field, right? Now, they're about the same temperament as Mr. Douglas this morning, right? <laughs> and uh, so, and they also knew that the only two things that came out of the air were angels or demons. And this thing wasn't an angel. So out they come with their pitchforks, which I'm sure if Mr. Douglas was capable, he would have had a pitchfork for us, right? <laughs> so, and they tore up this balloon, right? Well, we had a successful test here that, you know, maybe the sheep stepped on the duck's wing and it was injured a little bit, but it was good, right? And next they wanted to fly men but they're still a little bit uncertain of all this. And so what they were after is men that people wouldn't care so much if they didn't come back. So they went to the Paris and they visited the Bastille, the prison in Paris. And they went to the warden and they said, hey, you know, we need men that maybe you don't care that they come back, right? And the warden did what any government employee does and he says, I'll have to ask my boss, right? And so the buck gets passed, and finally the French nobility hear about this, right? And so the French nobility hear about it, and they say, no, this is far too noble an undertaking to be done by men of low estate. This must be done by noblemen. So two noblemen stepped up to do this. Uh, their names were the Marquis d'Arland and Roger de Palatra, right? And Palatra is where we get our modern day word for pilot, right? So, in any case, they went out to the uh, uh, Palace at Versailles, right? And this is November 22nd of 1783. They build a big smoky fire under this balloon, and they load Marquis d'Arland and Roger de Palatra into this balloon. They chop the rope, and off they go. It's the first manned flight, right? They fly off into the fields, and predictably, the uh, farmers did not get the memo. So out they come with their pitchforks again, right? But they learned from the last balloon flight. So when they landed and these farmers were coming with the pitchforks, right? That these gentlemen hold up a bottle and they say, stop, we're your countrymen and we come bearing the fruit of the country. And that is why we carry champagne. Now, this morning I don't think Mr. Douglas would have been too placated if we tried to buy him without alcohol. <laughs> so, but, uh, like I say, that is exactly the story of life. And uh, we'll go ahead and get this open. Yeah, well, you've already got something in your cup, so he's got to catch it. Oh, I have to catch it? Yeah, you got to catch the cork. Yeah. So you're going to have to, oh, you're going to catch it? No. No, you're going to catch it. You're going to catch it. Well, yeah. You're going to have to continue Start recording. recording. Here it goes. So where is it going? I don't know. Well, uh, get closer. I, I, yeah, I think oh, we you're probably need to be a bit yeah, closer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think we might do kind of a high trajectory. Okay. Ready? All right. I'll try. Okay. Yep. Here we go. Come loose, sir, right? Still. Okay. Still. Oh, 
You getting this? <laughs> getting it. It's gonna be epic. Yeah, it, I, I think this one's pretty well pressurized, so. And I hope I catch yeah. it. Ah, oh, oh, you oh, missed! Yeah. <laughs> you missed! Here, let me see the cord. Bad luck for me. <laughs> there we go. Thank you, sir. Yep. And, and here I am. Like, oh, yeah. How high is it going to go? <laughs> That's the joke, right? <laughs> Thank you. And the toast is... The winds have welcomed us with softness, and the sun has blessed us with his warm hands. We have flown so high and so well that God has joined us in our laughter and set us gently back into the waiting arms of Mother Earth. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you, Williams family. We appreciate it. You're very welcome. Oh, you're very welcome. You're welcome.